I'll start with my first thing about being here. My first favorite thing about being here in Gambia, the first pro I would say is living in a Muslim country. Um, I really, really am enjoying living in a Muslim country and going out. And when you go out, you know, you just see the Muslims. You're constantly giving the greeting and hearing the greeting. And it just feels really good, you know, to constantly be reminded about Allah. If you're out in the in the marketplace, you hear the event when the prayer time comes in. Even the huge, the, the largest marketplace here, which is in Serakunda, you know, when they actually have a masjid out there, you know, so when the when the prayer time comes in, they call the event. All of the Muslims, like they leave the shops, they drop everything, and they go in and they pray. Yeah, so Gambia is a Muslim country, and it's over 90, 95 percent Muslim. So I will say that because I am a Muslim and I'm a mom, I'm a mother of eight, all of my perspective is from a Muslim mother's uh, point of view. So a lot of my pros are, are going to be basically things that I feel like are have made a huge impact on my on my my home, my family, you know, and our um, yeah, a huge family lifestyle. So the second pro would have to be that it's definitely easier for me to raise my children. Um, that's something that I struggled with, you know, raising Muslim children in America and one of the top reasons why we left America. So one of the one of the pros, top pros about being here in Gambia is that it's easier for me to raise my children. And um, the the quality of life and just like our, our family being more family oriented and yeah, there are just so many benefits. I don't want to drag, you know, the video out too long because I'm already preparing for this to be like a kind of lengthy video. But yeah, so um, definitely like it's it's more family oriented and the the culture is more fam the, the culture in itself is family oriented and then it's also easier um i've seen a lot of benefits and advantages of being here and raising children yeah so my children my children have a higher quality quality of life um we have better relationship i have a better relationship with my children so i said i won't drag it out too much about that topic but yeah raising children it's easier it's easier here in gambia than it was in the u.s the third pro would have to be that it is easy to live a healthy lifestyle here in Gambia. Um, outside of me being a mother and, you know, uh, a Muslim, like the next most important thing to me is my health. I am a health coach. I'm a certified health coach and I'm a certified personal trainer. So like everything in my life revolves around being healthy you know, live in a healthy lifestyle and Gambia is perfect for that. It's very easy to live a healthy lifestyle over here. Walking, taking public transportation, it's, it is kind of like the, the, the norm over here. Although like a lot of people do have their own vehicles. I have my own vehicle also, but we still walk to the places that are close enough to walk. So in a lot of people, even if you are driving, you're driving your own vehicle, the way that the way that Gambia is set up, the society, you're definitely going to have to walk. Even if you park and you have to walk, you know, so it's just, it's really easy to live a healthy lifestyle over here. Also, um, the healthy foods, the, the fresh produce and the healthy foods are the inexpensive foods here in Gambia. And the more costly foods are the unhealthy foods. So those are the ones that are like more, more unaffordable, like the snacks, the candies, the cookies, and those things. In, in the um, the Western stores, they are the foods that tend to be more expensive. Whereas, uh, like I mentioned, like the healthy foods, the fresh produce and everything, they're inexpensive. So it's, it's easier to live a healthy lifestyle over here. And um, yeah, so healthy food is just, it's just normal. You'll see it all throughout Gambia, all throughout the marketplace. It's just easy, easy access to just pick up fresh fruits, you know, to snack on and things like that. And my children have adopted... Um, healthier lifestyles also so we did a whole transition in america before we moved here i was already on a healthy on a healthy uh living journey before we moved here you know but um i made a lot of progress like with my with my children um my son adam he's 14 he actually was allergic to fruit when we lived in america he was not able to eat any fruit at all and as soon as we moved here to gambia he was he was able to eat all of the fruits all of them so yeah it's it's amazing. Um, so yeah, the the healthy the healthy lifestyle, the healthy foods. That's definitely one of the top pros about being here. So for number four would have to be um, okay. So I talked about like healthy lifestyle. Number number four would have to be like reduced stress. It's a stress free environment, and I kind of feel like that's also um, has a lot to do with health and wellness because it's mental 
wellness, mental and emotional well-being. Like the the lifestyle here in Gambia, it's it's really laid back, it's stress-free. I feel like even even when I am experiencing stress, because stress is a is a normal part of life, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you live, you know, you're you you will encounter certain levels of stress. But I feel like even when I do feel stress or I'm stressed about something it's, it's easy for me to manage that. Like it's easy for you to, uh, it's easy. I feel like it's easy for you to find healing in whatever it is or from whatever it is that you, that you experience or whatever, you know, I, I do feel like it's a lot of, you have time to heal from a lot of, a lot of things, you know, here in Gambia, whereas, you know, when, whenever we were in America, whatever was going on, whether it was something traumatic, I, I remember, When I start thinking about America, it brings back a lot of trauma and stress, you know. But yeah, so you know, a lot, a lot of times you you go through things, even if they're really traumatic, you don't even have time to heal from it because it's so busy. You have to get back to, you have to get back to work. You have to get back to your life. You have to get back to like the hustle. You don't have time to heal from things. You don't have time to take care of yourself. You know, so you have time to take care of yourself here in Gambia. It's a slow paced, laid back, stress free um, lifestyle. If, if you're a person that values your health, your well being, your physical and mental health and well being, then yeah, that's a huge pro and benefit of being here in Gambia. You get to take care of yourself mentally and physically, focus on your health, get your, your life together in that aspect. So, number five would have to be. Um, the fact that it's really easy to access the beaches, I should, I should have put that up higher on the list because I go to the beach so much. It's crazy how close the beach, the beach is like five minutes from my house. Um, 10 minutes and in, in heavy, you know, if the, if the traffic is heavy and then there are so many other beaches, like I haven't even been to all the beaches here in Gambia and there are just so many beaches to choose from. I love the nature. You know, so even if I do have like a stressful day or I'm feeling overwhelmed just with life in general, because I am a mother of eight. And of course, like being a mother is hard and overwhelming anyway, but you can only imagine, you know, mashallah, I have, I have eight children. So even when I get like overwhelmed or I'm dealing with something really stressful, I can just, it's very easy for me to just go say, okay, I'm just going to go to the beach, you know, unwind, listen to the, the ocean, you know, get my feet wet, whatever. And I, I can just decide like at the spur of the moment, I'm going to go to the beach and just enjoy whatever, a few minutes, half a day. I don't have to, I don't have to plan like that. You know, it was really hectic and stressful trying to get to the beach in, in America and the closest beach was like, I think it was like three hours away living in that therapeutic, holistic um, environment within nature. So yeah. Being, being here in Africa is it's so healing and um, yeah, so I, I really love the environment and yeah. I kind of do feel like all the pros that I'm listing are um, are all tied into, you know, physical and mental well-being and health. But, you know, that's that's just me. That's my life. Those are the things that I, I value and the things that are important to me. So, yeah, all of, all of my pros are probably because of like... Um, benefits for my health or benefits of me being a mother and raising children so yeah I, I would definitely say um those are my top five pros of being here in Gambia so I wanted to start with what I feel like is the hugest con here in Gambia and it's actually what I'm experiencing right now um because I have a child that is admitted into the hospital so I would say that it's the healthcare system so far, the what I've seen in in the hospitals and in the clinics, it's just it's just scary, you know. Um, in comparison to what we're used to, you know, in in the U.S. with healthcare. Uh, so, for example, like my son Adam, he's admitted into the hospital right now, and my oldest daughter Aaliyah, she's 19 years old, so she's staying there with him. But so he had to be admitted. My son had to be admitted. Um, for IV medications that he was not able to get outpatient. It has been the scariest thing, like to the point that the second day that he was admitted into the hospital, I was actually, and it's a private, it's a private hospital, but I was actually um, considering 
just discontinuing his medications and everything and just and bringing him home i was considering um booking a flight and just getting him to the u.s for care it was it was just that bad of so many incidents happen you know while he was in the hospital um for one it it has been the most scariest thing it's something so simple like iv meds it has been the most scariest experience with dealing with the doctor's office so far um so basically i i went over because Aaliyah she actually had to get treatment in the hospital here in gambia um through iv treatment also and it should be simple but i i um i went over the warning signs you know of something being wrong with the iv you know the drip and everything like i went over that with my with both my children adam and Aaliyah. um <clears throat> i just seen things that that made me concerned about whether i could really leave them just completely in 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 the care of the the, the nurses and the staff that were there i just i just felt like you know my children themselves needed to be aware of warning signs and you know danger signs of getting medication you know when when the IV is dripping too fast or you know so anyway um Aaliyah was admitted first and she was there for one week and then Adam was admitted and so we did the same thing and Aaliyah went over with Adam you know what it was that she experienced while she was there and what you know the nurses were doing you know they they went to the same facility and like what to look lo what to look out for so long story short Adam was paying attention to the drip of the the IV med and he asked the nurse if he could some like reduce the drip rate because it was dripping too fast the nurse told him that it was harmless it was an antibiotic and it dripping fast was not going to hurt him shortly after Adam had difficulty breathing and he so yeah he had difficulty breathing um he said that he was experiencing chest pain. All of this happened in the in the in the late evening and he didn't tell me about it until the next morning. I asked my son, you know, he's 14 years old. I said, "Adam, what do you mean you had a difficulty breathing?" He said that he had to like gasp, take deep breaths um in order to just breathe normally. And I asked him did you ask the nurse to reduce like to lower the drip rate of the med and he said, "Yeah, but he said it couldn't hurt me because it was an antibiotic." irresponsible so basically after adam asked him to reduce the drip rate of the medicine and he refused to do it he never he never went back and assessed you know how his body was was taking the medication you know basically my son couldn't was having difficulty breathing and the nurse wasn't even aware so with him being 14 years old he didn't go back and bother the nurse or call the nurse and say hey I'm, I'm having trouble breathing I think the medication is dripping too fast because he asked him to reduce it and he didn't he didn't want to know why he you know why he requested for it to be reduced you know he just he just said it can't hurt you it's harmless so anyway of course I went up there and um and I spoke to the doctor about that and yeah that is just one of many things like Adam Adam had to be admitted for seven days and I swear every single day it was it was some other issue so basically after that um he had a slip and fall so he told the nurse that he was going to um take a shower and he the nurse was aware he was going to shower the, the nurse left the building and there was not another um there was not another medical professional like it was just a receptionist Okay, so the nurse, there was like, they were in between shifts and um, the nurse left and there was another nurse coming, but the nurse that, the nurse didn't wait for the, um, for the morning shift uh, nurse to arrive. Like he just, he just left. Adam was taking a shower. Adam slipped, fell, gashed his arm. Okay, that's the first part. The second part is that he had locked himself in the bathroom the bathroom doesn't have like it's it doesn't have a feature where you can get in from the outside if there's an emergency in the bathroom so it has a slip latch on the door had he not been able to get up off of the floor and unlock the bathroom door to come out who knows what who knows what would have happened so the nurse left the building there was not a nurse there was not a nurse in the building when he had a slip and fall and also the the whole setup and like the bathroom there was a step in the bathroom which is how he 
how he got tripped up and slipped and slipped and fell. Um, it's, it's just unsafe. You know, anyway, I could go, I could go on and on, but it is the, it is absolutely the thing that we're struggling the most. Oh my God. Like I can't even emphasize it's, it's just horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Like the healthcare. And that's not just one facility. Like I've definitely experienced more than one um, facility. And I don't, I don't care to mention like what, where we were, because I just feel like it's not necessary for me to go and, you know, taint the name of any partic particular place, but it's probably not going to matter because it's like the, it's like the mindset. The mindset is like really laid back and I don't, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's just a healthcare. Like it's, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Number two, I would have to say, you know, coming from the perspective of a mother, um, coming from the perspective of a mother, I think as a foreigner, it's, it's very difficult, um, to adapt to like a lot of the culture that goes, that goes on into, um, in the schools. A lot of the culture, uh, cultural things that happens in the schools. So for myself, you know, I had, uh, my three, my three girls, their ages, 11, nine and eight, I had them in the, the local Quran school, you know, and I had to pull them out because of like bullying that was happening in the school. Bullying culturally is actually normal. It's normal for teenagers to basically hit and do whatever, whatever they want to is, you know, to younger children um discipline them hit them you know what whatever like it's 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 socially acceptable and um and it's very normal so if you go and you complain to the head of a school or principal or whatever they're they're just going to look at you like your child has to adapt to the society and i'm, I'm actually in the process of getting an ustaz to come to my home to teach the girls quran but we're not we're not able to i i, I have had the most difficult time and I'm still not adapted to that like I cannot have um bullying amongst the the children the children are also very aggressive and they hit and they fight a lot and when the girls were in there like their scarves were constantly being pulled off and you know and that kind of thing is just overlooked it's just it's not a big deal it's normal it's a normal part of childhood they consider it so yeah a lot of bullying a lot of bullying goes on in it and it's just normal so i have to say that that's that's the second um huge con because there's so many there are so many schools here and i really want my kids to learn the local languages but i'm i'm keeping them out of those type of um settings so they're homeschooled you know so they have their regular they were homeschooled you know my children before we even moved here to gambia you know they were homeschooled for years yeah i wanted i wanted to be able to take advantage of the the extracurricular programs here and you know like the Quran and Arabic and stuff but yeah I, I have not yet found a place that doesn't think bullying is okay so until I do I guess they just won't be enrolled in any of in any of these schools so I would say number three would be um the theft and uh yeah that's 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 a really 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 big problem here in Gambia you know um to the to the extent like okay so in America, if you see a home that has bar bars on the window, you consider it like you will see that kind of stuff in really bad neighborhoods. And if you see a house like that, it's like a, it's a warning sign. It's a, it's a danger sign. Like, don't move there. It's a bad neighborhood. There, there are a lot of break, in, break ins. But here in Gambia, I actually have not seen a home that doesn't have bars on the window. It's just a precaution that everyone has to take. It doesn't it doesn't matter um how expensive your home is it doesn't matter what what neighborhood you know businesses they all have to have these bars and protect and um like protective wiring around the gates and stuff like that because so much thievery happens and i don't like i personally feel like it's because the the consequences are not great enough like people are just not paying they're not suffering enough consequence like I feel like if they would put laws in 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 place not to get into the politics of the place because I've only been here one year so I can't really like I'm not in a position to really get into politics of the place but I do personally feel like if people would go to jail for a really long time or suffer harsh consequences for breaking into homes stealing you know um then it, it would change the place because it just happens too much like I, we've had our our house um broken into within one month of us 
of us living here. And we had to hire security to stay on the premise to guard the place, you know, in, in the nighttime. And when, whenever we're not home, whenever we're leaving, we have to have someone in at our house. And most foreigners do have to do that. They have to have some form of security or, you know, there, there's just so many different instances. It happens every day, all day. Businesses, homes, apartments, it doesn't matter. Like if you're not, even it happens to locals also, like Gambians, they, they get they, they get their places broken into also. But it's more so um, foreigners. If you're not from here, you definitely have to have um, your your home your your place where you live you have to have it protected by some some um form of security so i would say that that's number three um but for me so the food sanitation food sanitation was a big deal um it's very interesting that a lot of people here do not believe in germs okay so i'll put it this way if someone doesn't believe in germs that means that there's no problem with cleaning the bathroom with a cloth and then using the same cloth to clean the kitchen. If you don't believe in like contamination or cross contamination, then you you don't do that. So a lot of people, I will not say everyone, but I will say most people here in Gambia do not believe in germs. So, you know, a lot of times people get sick it's not the food or the water that's making them sick. It could be like strands of E. coli or something, you know? So yeah, that's that's a big one, food sanitation. The power outages definitely take a lot of time to get used to. Um, you will adapt to it and get used to it if you're here, especially depending on the type of mindset that you have about it. If you kind of have like, it is what it is and just work through it, you know, go day by day, then you know, you, you, you adapt to it, but it's definitely a huge con. Um, especially if you're working from home, you know, you have an online business or something like that and you move here to Gambia, you will experience power outages sometimes. Um, yeah, like you have to take, you have to like charge your, charge up your phones, charge up your computers, charge up all of your electronics and keep them charged because you never know when, when the power is going to go out. If the power goes out and you had something that you needed to do online and your computer is dying or dead, then you can't do your work or whatever it is that you needed to do online. So that can be a huge con of being here um another one is internet but that goes with like it just depends on i guess it depends on what you need what you need it for even if you're not just like mindlessly browsing the internet but like some people have businesses online i work online you know and um it, it can be like a huge inconvenience when the internet it doesn't matter like for whatever reason it can just go out and it can be out for hours you know, it can be it, it can be out for a part of a day. In my experience, it normally goes out for a short duration of time and then and then it'll come back on. It's not normally out for a long period of time, but it can happen and I have experienced that that happening also. You know, like um the internet going out for a long period of time.